24 Legacy. Here it is, guys. My first two-episode review. And here, you're not going to get many spoilers. This is only the first two episodes of a review that is not complete, so you won't get a grade letter, you won't get anything. But we're going to get into this and talk about it and see what I liked, what I loved, and maybe what didn't quite work for me. Now, there's a lot of variables going on with this plot, and it does start you off immediately, and they catch you up as they go along. And that's the great thing about this show, is that they really give you opportunities to get to know these characters during the action, which is pretty crucial, especially since you don't have enough time to really relate to them. You understand what's going on. You get the idea that things have to happen pretty immediately. And so for that, we're introduced to Eric Carter, who's probably a few months fresh from coming home trying to settle into his life when he suddenly realizes his men are being picked off by retaliation of the terrorist group that they killed back in a mission prior. Things don't go well. These terrorists have eliminated all of the squadron minus two, Eric Carter and another squad mate, Ben Grimes, who actually has taken something from this terrorist team and this is what really revolves in the first two hours. Finding out what is it that Ben Grimes took and Eric Carter takes matters into his own hands to figure out what in the hell do these terrorists want. We have ourselves a two hour tightly knit story that I can only imagine can get worse as it goes on. And what I mean by worse mostly means in terms of for the character. Things are intense. Since I said from the moment that they get going, things start happening right away. That's very compelling, no doubt, but at the same time, it's almost frustrating because Ben Grimes is actually suffering from PTSD and he's going a little haywire. So he makes things extremely difficult for Eric, which can be annoying from an audience perspective as well as from the character's perspective. Things aren't going to go according to plan. The way things are set up are, hey, I want this. Oh, okay, I got to go get it. Fine. But the moment Eric Carter has to go get something in retaliation to what Ben Grimes is suddenly throwing out there, it makes it exceedingly difficult for Eric Carter to actually get anything done because more factors beyond him are preventing him to getting that accomplished. And this is a perfect segue to tell you what is beyond Eric Carter that prevents him from getting things done. In the mission, Rebecca Ingram was a former head of CTU. Once Eric Carter gets in contact with Ingram, it's suddenly clear that there's a leak somewhere because when these rangers came back from the mission, there were protocols in place to make sure that nobody was killed or they were safe at least coming back home. Now that all of the team is dead, minus two, someone smells a mole. And he puts his trust into Rebecca Ingram, who is visiting CTU and suddenly realizes herself that the person she chose to take over the directing chair of CTU may be the person who leaked that information. Beyond that, she's also having to deal with her husband, John Donovan, who is becoming a runner-up for the presidency and is focusing on his candidacy. So with her in the mix, she actually has to combat against a lot of protocols, a lot of things that people are trying to put in motion for her to leave things to the people who she chose to take over now that she's gone. But that's not happening because she has to help Eric. And that gets exceedingly difficult as well, considering the fact that she actually has to take matters into her own hands because Eric's the only person she can trust, and vice versa. And that's essentially what I really love about this 24 Legacy plotline thus far. It's very personally ingrained. It's immediate. There's a lot going on, and it's all on the fly. Just boom, 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 boom. Here's everything, let's keep moving. And it's great, it's high octane. It keeps things fresh and a cool pace and you're not really bored for a second with those characters in that storyline. I'd have to say there are a couple of subplots that I'm not quite sure where they're going. One in particular is John Donovan's side of things. Now, mind you, it's more integrated and more connected to Eric Carter's storyline, so it's not so bad, but it's more like, I'm just not feeling you just yet. You're the slower pace. You aren't exactly everything a part of the action, but you're interesting. 
The one thing that I think is the wild card right now is actually this separate story entirely, which could be different by the time that this whole story wraps up, is something happening at this school, Marshall High School, where this one student, Drew Phillips, he suspects his ex-girlfriend being a part of something that he accidentally, so to speak, took notice to and thought maybe his ex-girlfriend, Amira, she could be possibly involved with some sort of terrorist activities. And it's so low down on the totem pole, it feels that way at least, to where you're not exactly sure where the story is and it's not compelling enough to feel like it's going to be. But when the twists start happening with them, it's like, okay, yeah, I get it, but where are you going with this? And it's, I, I'm not so big on it. I don't care for it just yet. Things have happened in these two hours with them that I'm just like, I mean, that sucks, but where are you going? In the end, guys, 24 Legacy is starting off pretty strong. It could be different for you. It's compelling enough to be something that you can jump into with no problem. You don't necessarily need previous experience or knowledge of the nine seasons before it, but I actually would like to consider this being season 10 because from what I understand, there's actually a few characters kind of have some connection and I'm waiting to see that all come to fruition. So in the end, I'm gonna consider this a season 10. That's just me. I'm gonna consider this as a standalone, however, as well as a nice return to form for newcomers to come in and be something worth watching. So I do highly recommend 24 Legacy, not just as a fan, but as a TV show binge watching goer altogether. And I would love to know what you guys think. So tell me your praises, tell me your woes. If you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, please subscribe and I'll get you more videos in the future.